everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. Now I took some time off because Christmas was crazy, but I'm back with an, a fun video that I think you'll like. Now I am going to be showing you how I traced this house picture using an iPad and Vectornator. So a lot of people use Procreate. Uh, Christina from Woodshop on Instagram told me about a program she uses called Vectornator, which is free. So I used that and I was able to export this as a vector so I could do more designing with it in Silhouette Studio. So we are gonna be using an iPad. I have heard there are other ways to do different conversions with Windows PCs. I haven't done that yet. So this is the process that I use for converting these little house drawings over. I sold quite a few of these ornaments as, over Christmas time and these are perfect for like housewarming charcuterie boards and all of that fun stuff. So if you're ready for this video, go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss any more uploads and ring the bell. Please leave me a comment or a like, let me know what you think. And if you're watching this and you're like, hey, this is, this is my time, I wanna get a Glowforge of my own, you can use the code in the description or right here to save up to $500 on a new machine. All right, friends, so I have this on my iPad. So I am using an iPad Pro. Uh, this is actually like an older version. I think this is, um, I think two versions back. It was actually given to me. Um, so we are going to be using Vectornator. So I learned about this app through uh, Christina from Woodshop on Instagram. She makes these amazing street maps I've been dying to make myself. But I noticed that she was doing a bunch of work in Vector Program. And so um, you can see I do have Procreate, but I'm not that like artistic in the sense of like drawing. And I didn't like that Procreate couldn't allow me to export as SVG. So Vectornator will allow me to export as a vector, but here's the best part, it's also free. So we're gonna open Vectornator. I am using an Apple Pencil. And you can see here are some projects that I've been working on. So I'm gonna press this little plus sign here and I'm going to import. I'm going to import the photo that I'm working off of. So we'll do import, we'll go photo. And then I'm gonna go to my albums and I favorited it and we'll work on this house right here. So it'll process and you can see here is my photo. Now you can see this is going to work off of layers like other vector programs that we work with. So we're gonna hit it right here. You can see we have my house on this first layer and I'm gonna make a new layer for my um, lines to trace. So we'll do new, new layer and to keep this from moving, we are going to lock it. All right, so we have our second layer done here. So I've locked this, so I can't move it. And now we're ready to draw our line. So we're gonna hit layer two. And so now we're working in layer two. So you're gonna recognize a lot of these tools from typical vector programming. I'm gonna show you the ones that we need for this sort of tracing thing. So we're gonna start with our pen tool right here. It looks like a little fountain pen. We're gonna click that. And then we have this button right here for our appearance. This is our style, our appearance. So we want it to be um, a stroke. So we want it to be treated as a line. We don't want it to fill in. So you can see our stroke width is four point. I'm gonna take this and increase it to like nine to start and then hit enter. So we have nine point and then I always default to this pink color because I find it really bright. You can always click on this and choose whatever color you like. I choose pink because it's very, it's pretty unlikely that we're gonna have a pink house. So you can see I just drew a node there. No big deal. I'm going to hit this button right here to uh, undo. So let's get out of here. We don't need this panel right now. And I'm going to start with my tracing and I'm going to start with this side of the house. So the cool thing about the pen tool is that we don't actually need to like trace it like this. We can go through and start the one point of our line and go and hit the next one. So we're going to do tap right here. Oh, I had a point there already. So let's just go back. That's gone. So we have tap here, tap here. See that? So we have our line right there. And then we can go right here and continue on our line and so on and so forth. So this is something that um, we're going to do different kinds of lines and we're going to move on from there. So it doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm going to show you how we adjust it later. So I'm going to go back, go back, so there's the start of our line, you'll see green. And I want my line to just end up here, so I'm gonna double tap. And so now we have a line there. So there's a way to edit these at the end, so don't worry too much about like it being perfect because we're going to fix it. 
Okay, so let's continue on our roof line. So I'm gonna work on this gutter first. So I'm gonna hit this bottom part of it and then go right here and then zoom in. I'm gonna do this right here, move over here. And then I want it to reconnect at the start there. So let's just do double tap and now we have it there. And I think I actually did an extra one. So I hit control Z, I'm oh, not control Z. I'm so used to Silhouette Studio. And we did it like that. So let's go through, I'm gonna hit my layer and then I'm gonna do this little eye right here. So now you can see the start of it. We have that overlapping, not a big deal. We're gonna fix it at the end. All right, so now we're just going to continue on this entire process. Make sure you have your pen on and then check your settings. You have your appearance right here. Stroke, nine point. Now you can make your point size smaller. I'm gonna show you when we get to another part. But for this part, I think I'm gonna fast forward and just so you can see what I'm doing. So that's, oops. So that's over there. And I'm gonna do my next point across like this. And then end it right there. So we have it like this. And now let's do this little peak right here. All right, so double tap to end that. Start this one. Double tap to end that, okay? So we're just gonna continue on. So this part, I'm gonna do the base of it, like the outline. So this will probably be a time lapse, but don't worry, I'll be back to talk about more stuff. All right, you're gonna see there's a tree here. We're just gonna try to guess about where this goes. And then I'm gonna double tap to end it right here. Let's move back and finish the garage. Oops, you can see I accidentally hit a point there. So just hit back. And don't forget, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to adjust after the fact. So we got a good outline going on. Now we have the side of the house. And now we can take this, we're gonna adjust that to fix it, but we don't have to draw a new line and I'll show you why in a minute, oops. Okay, and so the last major line we need to do is just the bottom of the garage. Okay, let's go to our layers, hide this. So this is a good base that we're working off of, okay? Some, adjust that's, some adjustments that need to be made, but no big deal. Okay, so let's work on this little section here. This is where we're going to need to adjust our stroke and we're also going to need start curving it. So this is where we're going to start working with points. So let's just start from the beginning, our normal square. And actually, this is where I'm gonna start the stroke now. So I'm gonna go through, do my line, go to my style. You can see here's my stroke right here. Let's bring our stroke width down to like five. So you can see right there, see how it's smaller? See how it's smaller than that one? Let's make it even smaller. Okay. So now you can see our stroke width is smaller here. And so I want this because this is a little bit more detailed. So I want it to kind of make a difference. So now we're gonna go over here, set it right there. I'm gonna do one point at the top here. I'll show you why in a minute. One point here, and then end it. Okay, so now we need this to curve within our window. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up here to style, and at the top here we have nodes. So this is just like point editing and whatever vector software you use, whether it's Silhouette or Corel or Illustrator, we're still doing point editing or node editing as some call it. 
Um, so we're gonna go right here, hit this right here to curve it. You need to choose the node. Oh. I'm hitting control Z. So now to edit it right now, I had my pen tool selected. You'll see it right here. So the pen tool just creates new stuff. We want to edit what we already have in here. So this right here is kind of like our point editing tool. So we're going to take that and hit this point right here. You'll see it turns blue. See that? So now we can see it's a curve and I'm going to take my handle and kind of stretch it out. Basically an easy way to do point editing to think about it is that your line right here is going to try to chase this handle you do right here. So if I bring it out here, see how this is trying to chase it. So we're going to use that for point editing and you can see it's like a little bit harsh right here. So let's go to our nodes and kind of, uh, I don't want that. We want this one. Let me go back. So we're going to straighten up this one. Actually, I don't care about that at all. all. Right, so we have it set like this. Let's do our general pointer tool. You can see we have that nice curved shape. So we can go back, hit our little arrow here and smooth this out if we want, but I think it's fine. It is kind of harsh there anyway. Okay, so we're gonna do another um, little curve in there. So let's go back to our uh, pen tool. You can see our stroke width is still three. So now we're just gonna go back and do the same thing just for the inside now. And there's different ways to do this curve. This is the way that I prefer, but you could also kind of just do one curve here and bring it around that way. But I kind of like having this like curved node right at the top. So again, all a matter of preference, you can do whatever you want. And so I'm gonna actually move this over a little bit to kind of even this out. And then you can also do this one right here. It'll help you kind of change one side and not the other, which is what we're looking for. And doing something like this is a great way to get more familiar with point editing. Um, one thing that you could do is like, see how this is kind of crazy. You can bring this in. Or because you're doing like, you know, the way that these house illustrations work, it's kind of just supposed to be an outline. So you could just do one of these. You don't have to do a double. Okay, so let's hit this. Okay, so I think it looks fine. If you, you know, care more about it, like not care more about it, or is it not your preference, you can always switch it and not do one. Um, the other thing that you're gonna see is that it looks a little bit off, and that's just because of the angle of the photo. We can select it later and update how this looks. So let's select it just so you can see what I'm talking about. So I just used this pointer tool, dragged it over, and just to make it look a little bit more symmetrical, I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. And the reason why I'm doing it now is I'm gonna make my lines in here now, so I want to adjust it. So let's go through and fix our point editing with this. Let's take this, and I think I can Move this down. And let's take this and bring it all the way over there so it touches. Okay. And yep, I'm going to keep going. Let's bring this up. I don't like where this is actually. So I'm gonna take this and actually get rid of this inner one. I don't like it. So we'll kind of work from there, okay? Okay, so now we wanna do these little lines in here. You can see we have some in there. It gets kind of dark because there's shadows. So let me see if I can bring my brightness up. I mean, it kind of helps. All right, so let's go back to our line tool. This is the same thing. So 
we're going to do it. Double click. Don't worry about it being perfect. We're going to fix it after. Okay, so we have this here. Obviously, they need some work, so we're going to take this and basically use our point editing to straighten this out. And when you're doing something like this, don't forget, like, it doesn't have to necessarily be perfect on the picture. These illustrations are kind of intended to give, like, the overall look of the house. So uh, we can make our lines a little bit off of there because we're trying to convey how it looks overall. I don't know how I made an extra point in there, but I did. And this might be something that will be easier for you to do um, without the background in there as well. So we're going to do our preliminary adjustments. And then uh, when we get closer to the end, we'll take off our background image and kind of straighten it out on itself because we have this as a guide but sometimes it can skew how things look so we need to do it without anything behind it okay guys i'm sorry my recording stopped because i'm recording on my phone and even though you put it on do not disturb if someone from your favorites calls you it rings so guess who called me my husband nick so let me give you a review of what i did when i thought i was still recording um oops i just went ahead and created this window so the window was like a very similar process i kept this nine point stroke for the base part here and then i went down to three for this um the other thing that you can do is once these lines are done i used my point edit and I literally just took it and straightened it out like this so that they would be even. And then you can go right here to this little pointer tool and you can click and drag like this. Not click, we're not clicking. But you can see I have all of those selected. We're gonna go to arrange and then down here distribute. This will redistribute everything evenly from the first and last in that item. So we went through here and I just redistributed it vertically. You didn't see anything happen because I already did it, but uh, that's just kind of a little bit what I did. So we're almost done. Let me look over here. You can see we have the base here and we have that right there. I'm going to work on this window next. So this is a little bit dark, but this window is similar to this other one we had going on over there. We have a thick one right here and then we have a circle mirror window up there. So we are going to take our pen tool I'm going to make sure I'm back to nine. And guys, this takes practice. Like if you're not good at this right away, I was not good at it right away. It's okay. All right. And so we're going to take this. It, oops. What am I doing? Get this, this, and this for the base of the window. Let's do our point editing now. Oops. Bring that down like this. Okay, so we have that right there. So now we're going to go back to our pen tool. Hit this, this, and let's do our point editing like this. So now you can see here's our point right here, and these are the handles. Oops. Let's go right here, hit this point right here. So you can even do it something like this, but you can see it's like not really stretching out well. So we're gonna go back and do our point at the top like I normally do. So we'll do Point here, point here, point here. Go to our edit mode right there. And 
Let's go to this one. All right, so we adjusted it like that. Now I'm gonna go and hide my house so I can see what it overall looks like. See, so look, it looks pretty good. It looked like I was worried about it when it wasn't like that, but once we take it off, it looks pretty good. So now we're gonna go through, do our middle part for this. Use my point edit to get this. All right, so now we're gonna do our little line Oops, I had a point over there because I didn't end it. Double click, double tap. I think I'll say double click forever. Right. So we have that right there. So now we're gonna make our stroke back to three. And you can do whatever you want. I like the, the difference between three and nine, but that's all a preference thing. That's not something that's required at all. Like that's not an industry standard or something. Okay, so now we can go through, do some, get this out of here, do some fixing over there. Let's bring this up. All right, so that looks pretty good. Look at that little house. And so this has, um, what am I trying to say? This is just like the half moon there. So that's just the an empty window. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. So now we are going to work on the garage. So it's the little details that work out. And even though it seems like it's going to be a lot of work to do this garage, I'm going to show you a cool trick. So let's go through and adjust this a little bit more. We want to bring that up and straighten it. So like I've said, sometimes when you do this, you're gonna have to adjust it a little bit different than the picture because the picture can be angled a little bit. You want it to look good when it's flat. So when we do something like this, you'll see it looks pretty good. I could probably bring this up just a hair so, so it looks more even. Guys, if you tap the screen with two fingers, you'll undo. That's what I just learned. Okay, and while I'm here, I'm gonna fix this line. Okay, let's work on the garage. And just make sure you tap this layer when you wanna make some new ones. If you ever get a message layer locked, you probably have like available layer locked, you're probably clicking on your locked layer. Okay, go back to our pen tool. We wanna to go back, we want to draw it first. Okay, so we ended that. So we are going to select, oh, nope. Select this, let's bring it, make our stroke with three. So now you can see that's smaller. Let's get that out of there. And let's fix this rectangle. So again, guys, I'm sure, I'm not sure, I have a feeling there is a tool to make a rectangle in Vectornator, but I haven't looked for it because I've just been doing things this way. So now I'm gonna take this and actually um, look at it before I do any more because I'm gonna make copies of this. Okay, so let's bring that back. So we wanna make some copies. So there's a really cool copy and paste type of thing in here. It's super awesome. So we're gonna select this right here. So right here, we're gonna do copy and paste. So now we can literally just go like this and it'll drag us over a new copy. Check that out, isn't that cool? And so as long as you have this selected, you can drag over and make a copy. So we're literally just gonna go over here and continue on and make a bunch of copies. Do not worry about, you know, how perfect it looks. There are alignment tools in here. And you can go through and even like 
get this right here, this button right here, you can select multiple. So you can go through, deselect that, check it out. Oops. And my multiple selected, I can undo that, click and drag, and look, I just made an entire new row. So I'm gonna click that to click this multiple here, undo it because I already selected it, and bring this down. Cool, right? So turn those off. You don't want to make any more copies. All right, so you can see that is a hot mess, but we're going to fix it. So now we're going to take our select, grab these right here. We're going to start off by aligning those. So go to your arrange, align right here at the bottom. Look at the pictures. There's a little line through the middle, so we're aligning it like that. Check it out. So now those are straight. Oops. We're going to go through, grab these. Go to arrange, straighten it that way. Okay, so we have it that way. So now we're gonna do this way. Straighten it this way. Oops. Okay, so now we want to go through, oops, we're going to hit this to select multiples in here. And now we're going to align it this way, oops, turn that off. Actually, what we'll do is we'll grab this. So we have these aligned and, and these aligned. So we're gonna go right here, go to arrange, distribute. So there were extras in there. So that was a copied row. So we're just going to delete all of these. That was a copied row. So check it out. I have extras in here from making my copies. I don't want that. You see this? So this happens. It's really sensitive to clicks. So you might want to just move it down. Okay, that's fine. These probably have one more row. Yep. Okay, so we'll get rid of those. We're going to grab it like this. So we have copy, click and drag, turn it off. Okay, so we gotta redo some of this spacing. So center line, redistribute. Center line, redistribute, actually redistribute, there you go. So we have those set up, so now we need to take, oops, take it like this, grab that, align it, distribute, Align, distribute. Okay. So now look at that, we got our cute little garage. And looking at this, we know that this corner probably needs to come up a little bit. All right, so I think that this is good. So we're just gonna go through and like super fine 
like fine tune these areas where like maybe the lines don't touch all the way or they overlap a little bit so you can see this one can come in a little bit more okay check that out that's really cool right so what we are working with right now are realistically a bunch of lines we've adjusted the stroke you see here and the stroke is just how thick they make the line for um, viewing. But if we were to export this, they would all be singular lines. So we will miss the variance in this right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna select our entire design like this. And then we're gonna go over to um, path and convert to outline. See this right here? So path, third one, out oh what happened that was weird convert to outline so now if you look you'll see lines around the outside but what we need to look for is stuff like this right here see this this is just like using a script font in Silhouette Studio or whatever design program you use. So now we need to, to basically weld. So we're gonna select this whole thing in here again. And then in, in this software, it's called Combine. You can also use the icon that looks just like weld. So we're gonna go right here. So check it out. If you look, they're all combined. They look good. I missed that one little piece. Let's just pretend like I didn't. And now literally guys, we're all set to go. So now we can take this, export, and check it out. We have JPEG, PNG, PDF, SVG. So um, I actually like to export as a PDF. They come in really nicely in the Silhouette Studio, and if you're using Glowforge, you can pop it right in there. We just do PDF, SVG, and then you're all set. So I'm gonna take this. This video is long enough. I'm gonna put this on something, and I'll see you in just a minute for the uh, final product. So here is the final product for this project. So this was uh, engraved on a palette coaster from Johnson Plastics Plus. The great thing about doing these home engravings is that there's a lot of possibility with what you can put it on. It was a big seller for me for Christmas time this past year for ornaments, uh, charcuterie boards, and even little signs. So there's a lot of variety that you can do for housewarming or just some sort of house illustration. So thank you again for uh, helping me out, Christina from Christina from Woodshop. Make sure you check her out on Instagram. She told me about this app and she does some amazing work. So I'm very, very thankful that you shared some of your knowledge with me. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate if you subscribed and rang the bell. And don't forget to leave me a comment or a like to let me know what you think. And if you're ready to get a Glowforge of your own, you can use the link in the description to save up to $500 on a new machine.